So I wanted to set us off with looking, you're going to hear for some very inspiring speakers, but before we hear that, I wanted to talk very briefly about how we see this on the European level. And I wanted to just recall about 18 years ago, my organization, PICOM, went to about 10 countries to do this, this book of solidarity. And what we were trying to map was what was the solidarity that Europeans were extending to other immigrants, to, to migrants um, in their own countries. What was being uh, undertaken to show that migrants were actually part of societies. And so we were looking at this situation and obviously when you map solidarity it's very inspiring but at the same time it's very worrying because what else did we find we found cases like these in 1999 taxi driver trials taxi drivers who were traveling between the german and the polish border who were arrested because they were transporting undocumented migrants from poland at the time which was not an eu member state or April 1997, a Belgian woman was condemned by the court of the city of Bruges for living together with her undocumented partner, for harboring someone. Or Denmark in 2000, a pastor named Leif Bork Hansen was convicted on two occasions for sheltering 29 people who had been unsuccessful in their asylum applications. He provided accommodation in his own home and in other homes as well. And this pastor explained what his reasons were for doing that. He said, an unjust law cannot be a valid law. For me, there are things that are more important than the law. One is to help your neighbor and fellow human being if you see that that person is in need. We've seen through these cases and many others that criminalization of solidarity is unfortunately not a new reality in the EU. This has been going on for 20 years and more. Um, in fact, the Rizoma project now has seen that this is also increasing. From 2015 to 2019, there have been 158 people who have been investigated or formally prosecuted on the grounds of smuggling. And we have three of those people here with us today who will speak after me. hear their stories and we know that the impacts of criminalization on their lives are enormous. Some of them have been jailed. They have seen things that none of us also want to experience. So we see that this is also part of a broader picture. And to go forward, we need some changes. We need some changes on the EU level. And we are so glad to see so many members of parliament here and their teams with us. And we hope the new parliament will also work together with us to look at some of the tools on the EU level that need reforming, including the facilitation directive. Isabel Chopin from MPG will speak at the end and talk a little bit about that, what we want to do with that directive. But we need to revise it. We definitely need more clarity on it, some more guidelines. But we also need a new narrative change. We need to see migration in a more positive light. We need to see how migrants contribute to our lives and to our societies in a very positive way. And we also need to see rewarding and recognizing values of compassion and empathy and solidarity, like those who will now speak. And we need to see this more in the media and in what we, what we say and also what we do. So thank you very much for your support. And I'd like to now invite Salam to speak.